Could it be that the United States has already had a gay president and we just didn't know it? Imagine that history holding secrets we're still unraveling today. Today, we're diving into one of the most intriguing mysteries in American presidential history, James Buchanan, the 15th president of the United States, who holds the title of the only president to never marry. But was his bachelor lifestyle just a personal choice, or is there more to the story? We're about to explore the speculation and rumors that have swirled for over a century. Could Buchanan's close friendship with fellow Senator William Rufus Devane King hint at a hidden relationship? Let's find out what history has to say. James Buchanan, the 15th President of the United States, served from 1857 to 1861, a turbulent time right before the Civil War. Known for his diplomatic skills and political career, Buchanan held important positions, including Secretary of State and U.S. Senator, before becoming President. However, his presidency is often criticized for failing to address the growing divide between the North and South over slavery, which would soon tear the nation apart. What makes Buchanan even more unique in American history isn't just his controversial presidency, but the fact that he remains the only president who never married. Unlike other leaders of the time, Buchanan didn't have a first lady by his side. Instead, his niece, Harriet Lane, fulfilled many of those traditional duties during his time in office. His lifelong bachelorhood raised eyebrows then and continues to spark curiosity today. Why does Buchanan's single status fuel so much speculation? In a time when marriage was considered an essential part of a politician's public image, Buchanan's choice to remain unmarried was highly unusual. This led many to wonder if there was more behind it, especially given his famously close relationship with William Rufus Devane King. Who was William Rufus Devane King? William Rufus Devane King was a prominent American politician, serving as a senator from Alabama and briefly as vice president under Franklin Pierce. But what made him stand out in historical circles was his unusually close relationship with Buchanan. The two men were inseparable during their time in Washington, sharing not just political interests but also a home for many years. In an era when homosexuality was not openly discussed, the intense bond between Buchanan and King raised suspicions. Their close friendship, coupled with their disinterest in marriage, led to gossip within political circles. Some even jokingly referred to King as Miss Nancy and a Aunt Fancy, while rumors spread around Washington that the duo were essentially living as a couple. In fact, Buchanan himself once referred to King as, my better half. Despite the whispers and jokes, the possibility of a romantic relationship between Buchanan and King remained an open question, one not directly answered in their lifetimes. Both men were deeply private, and while personal letters between them revealed affectionate tones, nothing definitively pointed to a romantic relationship. Still, the mystery has endured, with modern historians revisiting their friendship through a more contemporary lens. In the 19th century, homosexuality was not discussed openly, and any same-sex relationships, whether romantic or platonic, were kept hidden due to societal norms. There was no public acceptance or legal recognition of homosexuality, and most people did not have the language or framework to understand it as we do today. Same-sex friendships could be deeply intimate, but without explicit documentation, it's difficult to draw clear conclusions about romantic involvement. Given this social climate, it's important to view the relationship between James Buchanan and William Rufus Devane King through the lens of their time. Their closeness, while unusual for two lifelong bachelors, may not have carried the same connotations then as it might today. In fact, deeply affectionate letters between men were fairly common in that period. What we interpret as romantic today may have simply been a reflection of the emotional intimacy that male friendships often held in the 19th century. This era's silence on homosexuality and the absence of direct evidence leaves the question of Buchanan's sexuality shrouded in mystery. While rumors circulated during Buchanan's lifetime, they were often framed in jokes or offhand remarks. Historians have debated whether Buchanan and King's relationship was romantic or whether they were simply close friends whose bond was subject to the speculative whispers of the political elite. One of the main sources fueling speculation about James Buchanan's possible homosexuality comes from the letters exchanged between him and William Rufus Devane King. 
These letters were intimate and affectionate by modern standards, with Buchanan referring to their relationship as of communion and expressing deep feelings of longing when King was away. Buchanan wrote about missing King's presence in Washington, D.C., and hinted at the emotional void he felt without his close companion. However, it's crucial to remember that in the 19th century, the way men expressed themselves in letters was often more emotional and flowery than what we might consider normal today. Male friendships of the era were sometimes accompanied by terms of endearment and expressions of love that might seem romantic from a modern perspective but were understood as platonic at the time. Thus, some historians argue that these letters should be interpreted as a reflection of a deep friendship rather than a romantic or sexual relationship. Unfortunately, many of Buchanan's personal letters were either destroyed or lost over time, making it even harder to piece together the true nature of his relationship with King. Without a full record, we can only speculate about what might have been said or implied in the correspondence that is no longer available. This absence of evidence leaves much to the imagination, allowing room for ongoing debate and interpretation. James Buchanan's close relationship with William Rufus Devane King wasn't just a private matter, it became a topic of gossip among political insiders. In Washington, where reputation and relationships were always under scrutiny, rumors circulated about the nature of their friendship. Political opponents and the press at the time were not shy about using personal gossip to undermine public figures. Buchanan and King were mockingly referred to as Miss Nancy and a Aunt Fancy by some and their living arrangement together raised eyebrows. Even Andrew Jackson reportedly called King Miss Nancy, a slang term used to imply effeminacy or homosexuality. Perhaps the most famous jab came from their time together in Washington, where some referred to them as Mr. Buchanan and his wife. This label, while likely intended as a political attack or a humorous dig, only fueled speculation about the nature of their relationship. In a society where norms of masculinity and heterosexuality were heavily emphasized, these kinds of comments would have been both damaging and provocative. Despite the gossip, neither Buchanan nor King ever publicly addressed the rumors. The political climate of the 19th century, with its conservative social values, likely discouraged such discussions. Their silence has left historians, biographers, and the public to wonder about the true nature of their connection. Buchanan's status as a lifelong bachelor, especially in an era when marriage was expected of men in power, added another layer of intrigue to the mystery. Over time, the conversation around James Buchanan's personal life has evolved. In today's society, with more openness and acceptance of diverse sexual orientations, historians and commentators revisit the question of Buchanan's possible homosexuality with greater nuance. While there is no definitive evidence that Buchanan and King had a romantic relationship, the fact that their close bond remains a point of interest speaks to how the norms of masculinity and sexuality have shifted over the centuries. It's important to remember that friendship between men in the 19th century looked different from today's standards. Intimate friendships, emotional letters, and close bonds were often common without necessarily implying a romantic or sexual relationship. However, Buchanan's unmarried status and deep connection with King keep the speculation alive in modern discussions, especially as more public figures throughout history have been recognized posthumously as part of the LGBTQ community. For the LGBTQ community, Buchanan's life has become a symbol of how society's expectations can shape narratives. Though there is no clear answer regarding his sexual orientation, his bachelorhood in the face of societal pressure adds to the ongoing dialogue about how individuals navigate personal identity within public life. It also serves as a reminder that history often leaves certain details unanswered, allowing future generations to speculate and draw their own conclusions. While James Buchanan is often remembered more for his failures in leadership, particularly his inability to prevent the civil war, his personal life now adds a layer of human intrigue to his legacy. Regardless of whether he was gay or not, Buchanan's story reflects the complexities of life in the public eye and the shifting perceptions of personal relationships across different eras. While the question of whether the United States has already had a gay president remains officially unanswered, the speculation surrounding James Buchanan certainly keeps the conversation alive. His lifelong bachelorhood and close relationship with William Rufus Devane King are key elements that continue to fuel curiosity and discussion, even though concrete evidence is lacking. 
Buchanan's life offers a glimpse into a different era, one where personal relationships, societal expectations, and public perception were vastly different from today. Ultimately, Buchanan's story symbolizes how personal lives, especially of public figures, can shape narratives and influence historical interpretation. Whether Buchanan was gay or not, his legacy reminds us of the evolving understanding of identity and the importance of acknowledging that history is often far more complex than it seems. Thanks for joining us on this intriguing journey into history. If you enjoyed exploring the mystery behind James Buchanan and want to dive into more fascinating stories, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our next deep dive. Drop your thoughts in the comments, do you think Buchanan might have been America's first gay president? We'd love to hear what you think.